right. Women micro-investors are getting ready to rock the entrepreneurial world. They're smart, they're connected, and they're joining angel groups in droves. Will they add value to the companies they invest in? Well, they are now buying 80% of all the products out here, and they're ruling the social networks. Portfolio lets these smart, connected women discover and invest in entrepreneurial companies they believe in, help them capture markets, and when they succeed, they all succeed as shareholders. Let's take a look at Kate. Kate is a new investor in Portfolio. She's pulled at LinkedIn, determined that she was an accredited investor. She's tagged her interest. She's looking at her impact, her future impact as an investor. She's invited her friends, and she's filled out her strategy as an investor. Now note, Kate is a new investor. She's also a pediatrician with a blog that goes out to about 4,000 people. On an angel list, she would be just a blip next to someone like Jason. She's never put any money. But for us, she is a high-value investor. Because even if she only puts in $10,000, if she can bring 10,000 customers to a company that we're interested in, Kate's a high-value investor. So let's look at what she likes on Portfolio. This is her Portfolio page. On that top row, she can spin through it and see new companies with new products that she's never seen before. It's a discovery phase. On that second row, those are all companies that are ready for investment. She knows on Portfolio, there's a lead investor, the terms are already negotiated, and they're great companies that she is interested in. So we're going to look back at the top as we spin through. Here's a new one that she hasn't seen. It's called Abby Post. She likes the teaser. And as she looks through it, she sees it's revolutionizing clothes for the plus-size woman. She knows on her blog this is an issue, and she thinks of it as a portfolio wow company. She says, wow, I know 100 people that would buy this. I know a dozen that might want to invest in it. So as she goes down, she checks out the overview, looks at the leadership of the team, knows that she can kind of thumb through when she wants to at her leisure, the PowerPoint, gets an update. She decides she's going to follow it. It might be one she's interested in. And as she sees it, she sees it's a product survey. So she can actually provide them a lot of data, which she'll do later. And she thinks about putting it on her blog. She'll go back now, and she can also unlock the investment data. So she'll go back now. There's a company that she's really looking at. It's been on her target list for a little while. And she sees the update on it. Not only do they have they filed their third patent, but they also seem to be trending with money. And she's just found out from one of her friends in San Francisco that's attended the meetup that she's actually met them in person. And the information she gets is, this team is even better in person than they look on Portfolio. So Kate's interested. She goes back, takes a look at Naya. It's in her field. It's a product for new moms. She goes through, walks through again, gets an idea, sees that they're investing, that the counter's moving quickly. And she decides to link this with her professional network and actually take the big step. Pulls it out, shares it, she hits the invest button. She's already reviewed the documents, moves forward, and congratulations, moves the money to 20,000. This is going to be Kate's first investment. And does it feel good to actually leverage her money behind products that she believes in, a team like Jaff and Janica that she can back, and to be able to move forward with a company that she knows is going to make a difference? We have the ability with Kate. Kate is an amazing resource to, uh, as an investor and to, to growing entrepreneurial companies. But there's many, many Kates. There are thousands, 10,000 Kates out there that can make a difference. We're here to unlock that. And I have expertise in unlocking high potential investors. I'm the CEO emeritus and uh, led the Kaufman Fellows Program as the founder and CEO for over 10 years, where we were unlocking the potential of investors. 
We are opening up our site today for the first time for investing. We're raising a seed round. When women back companies they believe in, we believe we're going to be able to shift the world for entrepreneurs and for ourselves. We're Portfolio. Okay. Well done. Okay. Thank you. Vivek, I know this is a passionate issue. Yeah, no, you. I think yeah. this, is, this is great. Excellent. Because all the current uh, sites are geared for the boys' club. Yes. Uh, this is, uh, I noticed that almost everything about it was geared towards women. And uh, mm -hmm. e even men can go to it, but it, it didn't have the objectionable images and all the crap that you see on, uh, yeah. on these male dominated sites. So good work, make it happen, and I wish Thank you lots you. of success. Thank you, Vivek. This looks like a better designed angel list. Uh, it, it's very well done. Angel List is boys' club material. It this is, is, this is wait, geared wait, for a different audience. Wait, you mean the VC audience. world is a boys' club? I've never heard that. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. What? But it's well, well Joyce, done. you're an investor, though, at a uh, great venture firm, Freestyle. When you see this, do you think it's actually an issue? Or do you think it should be separate? Or do you think they should be on Angel List? What do you think? I very much think that gender is an issue in Silicon Valley. Very much so. Yeah. Um, my question is, like, you know, as a female investor, uh, our, my goal is to be a good investor and I need to see as much deal flow as possible. So w will you have different kinds of companies that I would not otherwise see on uh, AngelList or whatnot? Because a lot of the top women invest, uh, entrepreneurs, they find me anyway, not even through AngelList, because you know, Vivek's right, AngelList is not made for people who, who are like me, right? Mm -hmm. um, so ha what else will you be able to bring to me that I wouldn't otherwise be able to see through my network of, of strong women founders and angelist scares the women away. I've, I've interviewed yeah. several that felt intimidated by the uh, by the antics, uh, you know, on yeah. that and several other sites. Yes, this is geared towards a different audience. Really, I've never yeah, heard of any. Oh, yes, yes, yeah. you know, this is what tons. I'm saying. The guys don't realize how much uh, yeah. sexism there is, which is implied in the sites that they have. Correct. Mm -hmm. Go look on the angelist syndicate and see how many women-led syndicates there are. Right. Let, let me answer but that question, But it's not stopping Joyce. women from starting it, syndicates, it does, is it? It does stop women because they feel intimidated. This, ah, is, yeah. this is what's needed is a, a site yeah. by women for women. I just want to be clear that I don't think AngelList is stopping any women from participating. I don't call the AngelList as such, yeah, but the yeah. fact is it's geared towards the boys club. Yes. It's Got not it. geared towards women. Right. Right. They let have let different leads, the they have different companies yeah. they would invest in. <laughs> it's a different audience altogether. Yeah. And this is why we need several sites like this. So let, me, so let me just also respond to what you're saying, Joyce. There's really two ways. One is a number of the companies that are on our site actually have a lead VC investor, but they're using this to actually de-risk it and to go out and capture markets. Right. Uh, and the second is that, but it will be a two-way street because others are coming in and we're searching for that lead investor and we're pulling from a very vast global network. Right. My hunch is that you'll do really well with the startups that have a, a female consumer target market yes. because the, VC, the VCs are woefully under-informed about how the female consumer works right. and thinks and behaves, so they make these false judgments based off of what their wives do, and their wives are not the normal consumer. That's exactly right, and they spend a lot more money getting those companies successful because they have to pivot so much, yeah. you know, because they don't understand. So they tend to be smaller companies with less ambitious but lower risks. And if I was rich like Jason, I would go and invest in a site like this because I'm also not uh, that, uh, you know, I'm more risk averse <laughs> than Jason is. There, there's a <laughs> shameful bias in Silicon Valley against women, period. Correct. And it's, it's shameful, but I'm not, my, question or concern is I'm not sure that like a women for women funding site will necessarily help or fix that per se. I think it gives and a lot of people the first swing at the pinata. I, I don't, I, I, but yeah, I like, what do you think? I've well, well, <laughs> well, researched this, I've interviewed literally hundreds of women. I mean, this is the number one complaint I get from them that when they go to the uh, 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 angel forums and they mm -hmm. go and hang out at the boys club stuff, they feel intimidated, they feel left out. One of the solutions is that women have to have their own places where they can be yes. comfortable and we don't have to feel intimidation. So, it, it, and I, I think that's absolutely right, Vivek. The other thing I would say about this, first of all, we're also looking at companies that are not run by women. So our first one, Pottery, was just a fabulous company uh, that was targeted at women. They're out of Dallas, Texas. So we are gonna, we're all gonna look at all of them. Um, but we're specifically engaging women and empowering them to do this. And that's going to make these, these institutional problems for uh, women lessen. You know, because if we collectively put this money in it together, we have enough wealth to balance out all the money that's coming so out of Women have more wealth than men have. They control they, the, uh, the 
pocket strings. The they do. <laughs> it's not women for women exclusively. It could be men, women. It's but it's targeted and designed to make women comfortable. To if you look use at every it. aspect the of the side, it, it was gentle. It wasn't uh, the same uh, harsh images you see on the guys' sites. It, it's almost that people refer to it as kind of a mix between Pinterest and AngelList, actually. I, I think you're really onto something with the tools that enable. Uh, companies to leverage their investors, especially as you see more syndicates, more investors, you need to get value out of these people besides just their capital. Yes. But I think you really need quickly to open it up to being, um, to be able to have companies on that are founded by both men and women, because there is research that shows that whenever you do broad-based restrictions on investing, your returns are reduced, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, funds that say they only invest in women founders, it significantly reduces their pool of well, potential companies. should invest in more diverse founders on that note as well. Which is another debate, um, you know, and you can look at the research about how many, um, how many venture funded, or how many startups are by women and then what each venture fund is investing and how they're, um, how they're doing it per percentage of what's okay. coming in. Well, well, great, great feedback, right. but we have to give everybody equal time. So let's hear it again for Portfolio. All right, thank you. Well done. Thank you.